Hello, welcome to the story of Franz Schubert, the story of the little boy who wrote beautiful songs. Franz Schubert. One might say of Schubert that he was born with a spring of melody in his heart and a song on his lips. Can anyone make a melody more lovely than this? This is from Schubert's song, Trout. Play it or have someone play it for you. Is it not worth remembering all one's life? Schubert composed many kinds of music, but his songs are most loved by everybody. They are sung all over the world, and just because he never let a song come from his lips that did not first come from his heart. Is not this a jolly one? This is from Schubert's song, Wandering. Schubert's full name was Franz Peter Schubert. He was born in Vienna in a very simple house that looks quite old-fashioned. Over the doorway there is a bust of Schubert, a few inches high, and a sign on the house says, Franz Schubert's birthplace. Dates are easy to remember if we write them, so you must ask your teacher when Schubert was born and put in the date in the next sentence. Franz Schubert was born in 1797. At that time, the great American authors Washington Irving, James Fenimore Cooper, and William Cullen Bryant were all boys. You may not know so much about them now, but someday they will be quite as good friends as, you, as any you will ever make. Even though these boys were a little older than Franz Schubert, let us always think of them together. And of course, we should think of Schubert together with the composers who lived when he did. Here are some whose names you can easily remember. Von Weber, Rossini, Czerny, Donizetti. Czerny was born in the year 1794 and wrote many studies for the piano. How much older was he than Franz Schubert? Von Weber wrote operas and conducted them himself. He was born 11 years before Schubert. Rossini was an Italian composer of operas, born in 1792, five years before Schubert. Schubert's life is so short, however, that Rossini lived 40 years longer than the great songwriter. Donizetti was an Italian opera composer. One of his very well-known operas was Lucia di Lammermoor. He was born in 1797, just as Schubert was. Franz's father was a schoolmaster, and so was Franz himself for three years. He taught the little children of Vienna their ABCs and how to do sums. Of course, he helped them to learn to read. Sometimes we find it quite hard to take one piano lesson or violin lesson a week, but from the time when Franz Schubert was a very little boy, he had lessons every week for violin, voice, and piano. A little later, he began to study harmony with a very famous man who knew Mozart. His name was Antonio Salieri. With so many lessons and with schoolwork just as we have it, Franz must have been a very busy boy. He was quite poor and often very hungry, but in spite of that, he was always good-natured and full of fun. At 11 years of age, she became a singer in the chapel of the emperor. It was here that Salieri was director. Franz sang in the choir until he was nearly 17. Then he became a schoolmaster because, of course, he had to earn his living. Wherever he was, Franz was thinking music and composing it. Once... He wrote a song called The Serenade out at a table outside an inn. An artist has made a picture of this. Once Schubert was seen by his boyhood friends busily writing a new song. So quick did he write that the ink was hardly dry on one sheet before he moved on to the next. He was writing the music to a beautiful fairy poem by the great German poet Goethe. The poem is called The Earl King and tells how the fairy Earl King chases a father who is running on horseback with his dying child in his arms. Finally, just as the father reaches his courtyard, the child dies. It's a beautiful song sung by the greatest singers. Goethe, the great poet, is not known to have met Schubert, and he paid little attention to his music. Here is his picture. This is Johann Wolfgang Goethe. Sometime you will learn about Joseph Haydn who died in Vienna when little Franz was 12 years old. Papa Haydn, as he was called, was music master in a famous family called the Esther Hazies. Um, let us put a picture of Joseph Haydn here just to remember that he was an old man of 77 when little Franz was a boy of 12. Well, Franz Schubert also lived for a time with the Esther Hazy family. He was a piano teacher to the ch children of Count Johann. Franz was then 21 years old. In what year was he 21? A good friend of Schubert's was Michael Vogel. He was a famous singer who did all he could to make Schubert's songs well known. They took little vacation trips together and were good companions. When you read it, 
more about this, this singer's friendship with Franz Schubert. You will learn, you will like him for being so kind to one who had very little pleasure in life. He looks like a good friend even in a picture, do you not think so? Once when Schubert and Vogel were playing, enjoying a vacation in the t mount tour in the mountains, Franz read Scott's Lady of the Lake, which was printed in the year 1810, when Schubert was 13 years old. Schubert set some of this poem to music, a fact that you will remember when you read it in school. Perhaps you could remember at the same time that Scott was a little older than Schubert and just one year younger than Beethoven. Beethoven lived in Vienna at the time, and Schubert, with two friends, went to see him. Beethoven was very deaf, and those who met him had to write down what they wanted to say with a large pencil, such as used by carpenters. Schubert was so modest and nervous upon meeting the great master that he could not even write his replies. Here is a picture of the way Beethoven looked as he walked down the street in those days. Once, when Schubert was very ill, a friend sent him some books to read. They were the last of the Mohicans, the spy, the pilot, and the pioneer. Now these books were written by the American author, whose name you must find for yourself. They were all written by James Fenimore Cooper. See what a simple workroom Schubert had? Here are his clavier and chair and a few books. Schubert had music in his mind and soul all the time, and it said that one of his favorite songs, favorite walks, was down by a mill where he was inspired to write some beautiful songs. This is the way Franz Schubert wrote his name.